So welcome back to the shop, friends. What do we have here? An upgrade? No, this is definitely not an upgrade. This is a, what is this, Jack? Is it a 2006 or is it a 96? I'm not sure. Honda, it's a dirt bike. Honda XR250 that belongs to a buddy of mine uh, who uh, is on the fire department with me. He actually has a real job, so he has, is having a hard time, uh, find, or hard time finding the time to get his bike up and going because uh, him and his boy want to come and ride with a group. We've got a pretty good group together with uh, fathers and sons that have been going out and riding and having a ball. So I told him, bring it on up here, um, and I'll see, <laughs> see what I could do. It's got, uh, it's got three problems. Apparently it runs. Uh, that remains to be seen. But it's got a few uh, little minor problems that I think that Jack and I can get sorted out. Uh, I thought you might enjoy it, and uh, we'll see, see if we can't get this old Honda going today. So while I'm working on Jeremy's bike, Jack is doing some pretty heavy duty upgrades to your bike. So what happened to you on our last ride? I broke my toe. You didn't break your toe, but he, he went, went down hard. Yeah, I broke, my, uh, I broke my brake lever on my toe. So when Jack was, we, we didn't do a whole lot to Jack's bike because I always thought that this was kind of an, an intermediate to kind of get him, get him up and going, get him comfortable on two wheels, being that, that he's pretty much grow, grown up on quads with four wheels. And then he's gotten so tall that we'll put him on a 150. So I was reluctant to, to put a whole lot into this bike, not to mention the fact that they just don't make a lot of upgrade stuff for these little bikes. But one thing we found out that he was seriously lacking when you, when you wiped out the other day was bark busters. Mm -hmm. Bark busters are hand guards that protect the levers and protect the hands. And when you were riding on first and second gear, I wasn't too concerned about it, but now you're getting pretty fast and getting up into third and fourth gear. And then he had a pretty, he had a crash and then the bike went over and then he broke off the clutch, the front brake handle. Which made it very hard to get back. On your, t on your toe and we, and we were on some pretty tough stuff. So we thought, all right, Jack, it's time. We'll come back and we'll get you some bark busters and some extra handles on that because his ride was over that day. He had to go back to the van and, and that was it. So and sat uh, there and listened to the radio for a couple hours. Yeah, I so uh, I had a book. And, and also, um, I did some damage on my new bike <laughs> that we'll be repairing today. So um, we'll just, you, you can come and hang out with us in the shop today as we uh, take, care of, take care of business. So what we've done here is a couple things. So for Jack's bike, we've, um, we've put bar risers on there to get the handlebars up a little bit because he's getting so tall that he can't stand up on the bike. And this has, made, uh, this has helped him out quite a bit. And then we're installing these guys here, which will be the, the hand guards, the bark busters, which will protect him and those levers. So that we, way, if I fall over, then I'll have a much bigger surface hitting my entire foot. Can I give you a piece of advice? Yes. Bring the tools to you so you don't have to go to the tools. So we've got everything laid out for the job here. These are the, here's the hand guards. These will be, now I, you picked out the red ones. I probably would have done the white ones. You like the red ones better? Mm -hmm. Why the red ones? Because your, your bike is red? Because I, I feel like white is the, um, is not, not really a color. Same day that Jack went down, I went down pretty hard too and, and cracked my plastic on there. And thankfully I had those nice ra radiator guards uh, or it went, it crashed so hard that I think that it would have bent the radiator. So it could have been that had I not put the guards on there, the plastic would have survived. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. This may be a direct result from the radio guards, but we have a box that I think might have the solution inside. So I got home, I ordered, there it is, replacement factory plastic. I'm very happy to see that the stickers are on there. I thought you were going to bring out uh, Loctite. Oh, Loctite could have fixed that. I just dripped some on there, some white Loctite. Uh, unfortunately, you had to buy both of them. Uh, so uh, I guess I have a spare for the other side now. Because this is pushing out while I'm pulling this out. Right, and the reason, so the reason why that's not going in there is because you've, you've tightened this, this up here and it's locked up. So before you fit anything like this, you just, you loose, loosen, loosely tighten everything so that you can move it in position like that. Now try tapping on it and see what happens. The first issue we've got to address on Jeremy's bike is he said he put this new uh, petcock on here, this new uh, shutoff valve, and it was leaking around the bottom of the plastic tank. So I pulled it off here and I smell 
the very familiar smell of varnished gasoline, which is not a good, not, <laughs> not, not a good scene. That means that there's been gasoline, sit, gasoline sitting in this bike for a long time and it's varnished up. It, don't, make sure you buy non-ethanol gas if you're gonna leave it or stabilizer or run the, run the engine once in a while because so that is a huge problem. So I suspect that there's something wrong with this O-ring here. So also, as I got this off, so the fuel line is all cracked, completely dry. So we'll want to replace that. It's got an old filter on it. It's probably full of varnish. Um, so let's, <clears throat> let's pull the tank off and see if we can fix, fix uh, the first thing here. So you see the, see the reveal on the, the two ovals here? Mm -hmm. They're about the same. They're not about the same. Really? Yeah, they're probably, uh, this one's twice as much as this one here. And so what do we need to do uh, to make those the same? This, this is fixed, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the only thing we can move? Uh, we need to use, it's hammer time. Yeah, so we'll use a brass hammer here. And, and how does that look? Is that getting? Uh, that looks pretty close to the same. That's good. I don't have the service manual for this Honda, so everything is kind of trial and error here. So if you're an engineering student, don't be like the engineers of old, mixing up different sizes of bolts. Think about the end user. Think about the guy that's gonna probably take his seat off and his tank off to work on his bike. How about making the bolts all the same size instead of three different sizes? So to save you time and trouble. I mean, it, on your end, does it really make that much difference? Whether it's a, a 12 or an 11, upsize them, make them both 12s, just make it simpler. So we have a slight issue. There's a, two holes here, there's only one hole here. The other hole isn't drilled through it, so we have to just drill through on that one. Can you handle that? So I'm just going to drill through it here, and you want to do it on a piece of wood so it doesn't damage the drill bit or your table, or uh, on a vise so that it goes through into nothingness. So I've got two options of guards for you, Jack, if you'd rather have the... I'd rather have red. I've got the black ones, too. I think I'd rather have red. Black doesn't really go with my colors. What are you looking for, the screws? Uh, yeah. I had them right here. Bob, we're at a 243. We're out of blue? Is it empty? Yes. Um, okay, so we'll just go with a, we'll just use a red. Yeah, it's, it just, you're not gonna take those off there, probably ever, so that should work for you. Is that, is that blue? Yeah, it's blue. Let me see. What number is that? 220. 220's blue? 220 is blue. I didn't know there was two different blues. Now, since you're gonna be put, putting thread lock on there, you don't have to get it very tight. Remember that you're, this is aluminum, mm -hmm. and aluminum's pretty soft. So when you're torquing steel bolts into aluminum, you want to be careful not to over tighten them. When you're tightening a Phillips screw like that, you want to uh, lean into it, that last bit. But it's a poor design for a screw. Dry, for a screw. And it, if you don't push in there when you tighten, go ahead and give it some pressure, then it'll slip out and strip the screw. Push in with your weight and turn. See how it slipped out there? It's got to be perfectly in line as well. If I ever had a restaurant on top of my, inside of a uh, cruise ship, I'd name it Fish and Ships. Fish and Ships. <laughs> so here's the bottom of the tank. I've got it upside down here. Let's see what's going on here. And I can see what it is. Jack, come over here. I wanted you to see this as well. All right, so this is the bottom of the tank. And you see how the reserve works now when you turn to to fuel to on, so dirt motorcycles have a reserve, so you run it on on, and as soon as the tank level drops to here, it will uh, it'll run out of fuel. You turn it to reserve, and it'll, it'll change. It'll have a lower pickup down here somewhere. Um, but what's happening is, is it's leaking. It was leaking around here. So what Jeremy did is he replaced this piece. He put the new piece on there, but he didn't replace the O-ring. If you look at that O-ring, they're supposed to be round. What is wrong with that O-ring? It's a bit lopsided. It's flat. It's smashed. It's so old that it's been smashed flat. You can see right there how it's got a flat side to it. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is that when we're putting this in here and we're tightening that down, that O-ring... Yes, it's just going out of the side. That's right. It should seal against the bottom of the tank and against the housing right there, and it's just going around. So what we need to do is to replace that O-ring with one that's 
a little bit bigger, a little still round. How are you coming on your, your end of it? I'm nearly done. I'm just tightening these up. Okay. Can I give you some advice here? Yes. First off, you don't use a wrench this way. I... And second off is, is you have to, when you're tightening things that clamp like this, you have to tight, tighten equally. What's happened on there? What's your, where's your gap? It's non-existent. Okay, what's your gap over here? It's quite large. Right. So when everything's said and done, what you want to do is you want to make, tighten those equally, get a ratchet instead of a wrench, and say do four turns, four turns, four turns, four turns, and then when you're tightening, tighten it up so that those gaps are the same on both ends. That way the clamping pressure is equal. The second problem we have on Jeremy's bike here is the this sticky throttle. That's very very bad. That's dangerous. You, you don't want that hanging up on you at all. You grab a handful of throttle in the wrong place and that thing sticks wide open and uh, very dangerous. So we got to figure out what's going on with this. And it looks like to me, we've got some, def it's deformed here on the edge of the grip. If we're, I can try to get this grip off. If we can't, we'll have to cut it off and replace the grips, but let's take the grip off and see what's going on inside there. So uh, one trick you can do is with compressed air is sometimes you can get a nozzle in there and inflate that grip. Get some air, kind of break that seal to get them off unless, you know, it may be glued on to them. It may just be hopeless, but it does have glue on it. I can see it, but we might be able to, these gri grips are, it's definitely there in need of replacing. Yeah, I'm not going to fool with it. I think sometimes you just got to, do the right thing and replace something when it's when it's had it. Yeah, that whole throttle tube is is uh, it's, it's not very good shape there. So it wasn't the grip that was causing it to stick. You can see that it's still stuck wide open. I don't know. It could be the cables. It could be uh, the throttle housing. So we'll just have to start taking things apart and find out where the friction is, we might be able to clean that housing up. It might just have some grink or some junk in there. Some guys will put grease in these throttle housings and you don't want to do that because it collects dirt and grime and it gets really, it starts to lag and to, you want to use a dry lube. <laughs> what do you think? That's going to protect your hand. Also, did you notice when you were riding behind the big bikes, Jesse and I, that you were getting a lot of blasted by a lot of rocks. No, because I was always very far behind you. <laughs> but you saw the potential, right? Mm -hmm. So these will the only they'll protect your hands from those rocks as well. And that's why you wear a chest protector and goggles and the helmet because those big bikes will throw big rocks. So that looks pretty good. That fits really nice there. That's gonna help you save your hands and your levers if you hit a tree. Hopefully. Good job. So we put uh, Jack was getting some blisters too on his hands. So we put some little uh, neoprene donuts on there. That should help. You check your throttle, is it nice and mm -hmm. snappy? Let's see. Not, not catching, mm -mm. even. Looks pretty good. I think you did a good job on that. You got a little bit of bar showing there. That's good. Okay, I think you're done. Well done, John. I'm pretty sure what's causing the sticky throttle is just a, you know, it's a whole bunch of things. It's just, just neglect. It's just, these bikes can't be, outside um, and not ran for years they just get gummed up and stuff so here we have this is this is what is pulling the opening the throttle body in the carburetor uh, it's it's not the cable should be replaced uh, but i don't know how far he wants to go into this so what we can probably do is it's going to be a little bit sluggish as we can put some uh, we can lubricate that cable down from the top here and then clean everything else out all of this stuff the cam and all that it's all gunky and gummed up and cobwebs we can clean that out um, put some lubricant on there and i think that'll that'll get us it'll it's a half measure but it'll it'll work so this is down the other end of the cable on the carburetor it's hanging up it's it's just filthy down there it's all gunked up and greasy so we can uh, we can take some carburetor cleaner and at least clean that up a little bit. We'll also clean up this barrel. This should be replaced as well. Uh, look at, yeah, look at all the gunk and grime in there. And then we'll put a, a good silicone based uh, dry lubricant on there. All these pieces there. Some new grips. So go look at, 
cleaning up good already right there. That's, that's a big part of the problem right there. When you're using carburetor cleaner, you can make it go a little bit further if you have a little stainless, little stainless uh, a tub like this or a little bowl, because uh, you can then you can catch what you use and and then use a little parts washing brush and get that uh, cleaned up there. Clean the bar off here. Now this is where. Of course, this is where this barrel is going to slide on there. So if we have any glue or gunk in there, it's not going to not going to be good. This, this bike's had some use there when the you've worn off all the that thick anodizing on there. But there's no reason to think that it won't. It's a Honda. It'll go. It's good for another two or three people, right? These things are so, just so well built. It's a shame to see them. I hate to see them outside. That's the worst thing. Just not using them is the worst thing. If you could keep it in the garage and start it up once in a while, that would uh, well, I'd go a long ways. But that's, that's already better. Let's put it back together and see, uh, see how it does. So I'm sorry to say the throttle cable is a, it's just a lost cause. I've taken it apart twice, tried to get some lube down in there, and I, I can get it to return, but as soon as you turn the handlebars and put a bind on it, it, it's stuck open, so just, it's, it's not safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and order a new uh, throttle cable assembly and we'll get that O-ring on there. And let's take a look at the air filter. Ooh, okay, so there's some dead bird in there. So the air filter is, uh, yeah, it's starting to break down, so we'll replace that. It's uh, a lost cause. I think I'll just leave the, don't want to desecrate the dead there. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We'll get it, I'll, I'll go down to Honda. We'll get a new air filter, both of the, uh, the shift levers, shift and brake left, the clutch and brake levers, the ends are broken off there. Focus, focus. Uh, I'll get uh, replace those. It's nice to have good, new, new controls. We'll put some new grips on it. Then you can use these for spares. You know, they'll go in your pack. This one here is broken off as well. Um, replace this, replace the cables. Probably replace, I'll just replace the whole throttle assembly. Um, just do it right so it's not going to be a, a hazard. And then uh, put it together and see, <laughs> see if it starts. So uh, more to follow, to be continued on this. So I'll, um, I'm going to head out, I'll go get the parts, and then uh, we'll um, put them all on and, and see how it goes. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.